Hey guys, Mika here, and I'm bringing you the fiery red tenor curly claw Steve Grimes custom ukulele. And what I mean by fiery red is that the most common colors from what I've seen with my own eyes on ukuleles is that you'll have claw that looks very brown, very orange. Um, sometimes you'll have a lighter tanner color. You can look at the sap, think of the sapwood, how it can get really white. Uh, we can get really dark chocolate koa. Um, to less chocolatey of a koa, uh, koa where it's you know really dark brown um, but with this one it's a thing to see kind of like fiery red or like a red kind of hue in the koa but to see the front back and sides of this instrument be so predominantly red like versus oh look you can see some red here and some red here in the streaks this is just red and this is just naturally what this koa looks like. And to really understand how dark red and just fiery red this koa is, is that this is a pretty perfect example of what your standard koa would look like. It looks like this orange kind of color, um, very standard. So when you compare it, this red on orange or this, you know, this red on orange, you can really see just how much red is baked into this, this curly koa. And of course, look at the curly coat itself with the big fat um, grain patterns and, and the curls. It's it's a work of art, really. I mean, again, just seeing coal like this is so extremely rare. Like, I'm trying to find the right words to just show how like like I, I, I can't even think of another time where I saw a fiery red coal like this. I mean, coal again, comes in so many different um curl patterns and then the grain patterns and the color schemes and just like with the sapwood without the sapwood so many different variations of coal but man like this is just something special it just incredible um again with the aesthetics of the orange or the typical coal against the fire red coal on the front back and sides is just phenomenal um we even see it here we have a little side port with the coal binding right here and something that I don't really know any other luthier, to my knowledge, that uses purple or like a magenta or not magenta, like a lavender kind of uh, purfling color. But that's what Steve does around his ukuleles with the white and lavender or white purple purfling uh, around the sides, around the rosette. And then we have more of a white purfling around the sides. And then we have more of the purple here around the back of the instrument. Um, and then we even have the purple purfling around the headstock. And then we have an ebony binding, ebony fretboard, ebony faceplate with the Grimes signature here on the top. And then one last place with the purple is right here on the bridge itself with the koa kind of strip where you have the tie, uh, the tie knot bridge. And then you have the, koa, the curly koa right here and then the purple purfling around the koa. So really nice and elegant. There's not too much more to say about this instrument in terms of aesthetics other than the gold and black gold tuners, which I love. Big, big fan of the gold and black. Um, color scheme on this instrument and then we have a gloss finish neck and then we have a radius fretboard as well on this instrument um, notice on the fretboard itself we have flowers and this is a steve grimes thing to do on the fretboard he likes to put um, fret markers and other various designs too on the fifth and then on the twelfth fret however you can also see the regular fret markers here on the side on the typical 5 7 10 12 and it even uh, no 15 on this one but you have your 5, 7, 10, 12, just like that. Beautiful instrument. I, I can't really stop staring at just how fierce and fiery uh, this coal is and really being able to see around the rosette. Again, the typical, more normalish color you'll find of, of Hawaiian coal and then just seeing the red and, and the 3D effects of the coal is just absolutely insane. Super crazy. Now, in terms of playability, in my opinion, Steve Grimes' instrument is probably one of, if not one of the easiest instruments to play in terms of playability um, for subjectively by, for my playing style and what I like to do, whether I'm strumming or doing more uh, finger style all over the fretboard or in the first three frets. He sets up his instruments in a way where the action is so low but it doesn't buzz. Like he, have, he finds that sweet spot where you can still dig into the instrument and you can do what you gotta do, but the the strings are so close to the fret, to the wires, the fretboard, that when I hold a bar chord and coupled with the radius fretboard, I can go ahead and hold like this F major seven chord. And I don't really have to hold that much pressure to, to get this nice clean sound. 
it's just really nice and i really appreciate um like attention little attention to details like that steve is also a player himself a guitar player so i think he understands that as a musician you know we if you if our action is too high and our hands are hurting five minutes into our three hour gig it's going to be a long painful night so having an action set up this low means that i can go ahead and hold all of these more complicated chords especially bar chords just a little easier so that your playing stamina will last longer whether you're you know playing professionally playing at a gig or just playing at home you know i don't think anyone wants to play for five minutes and then be sore after five minutes. So if you can play for 30 minutes, for an hour, for people who have arthritis in their hands and you know, it's, you're just not able to play longer, playing an instrument that's set up in this manner and how Steve builds his instruments, this is one of those instruments that will help greatly um, with just the playability um, for yourself. Now in terms of the sound, for me and what my ear is here for Steve's um, instruments, he likes to build, again, this is just my opinion, but he likes to, it seems like he likes to build more on the warmer side. You get more of that warmer, old traditional kind of style of sound. So like, or for strumming, it just has a nice, full, nice, warm sound. You don't have too much punchiness from the A or the E strings, but you have a lot of that. Oh, sorry. A nice, warm, rounded sound on the top two strings. Especially because you have a wound third string on the C and then a wound low G, the gold string um, on the top two strings. So you get a nice warm rounded sound and then you don't get too much punchiness on the A and the E string. You can still clearly hear the clarity, but you have more of a rounded, more mellow sound. So it doesn't jump out at you, doesn't really cut through as much, say as like floral carbon strings. Yeah, nice rounded warm sound. But that doesn't mean you're not able to pluck on the higher frets and it's gonna get, you know, you're not gonna get enough crispiness. This nice B flat chord up here, you can still hear every single note real nice. Just gonna have a nice warmer texture to it. So if you're one of those kind of players that, oh, you know, I just don't really care for, say, fluorocarbon strings or like, you know, whenever I pluck on the A, just, it just hurts my ears because it's too bright or there's too much treble sound. Well, if you're more into that warmer kind of sound spectrum, then Steve Grimes is one of like the best instruments you can get out there in terms of having that really warm, well-rounded sound, sound quality. And again, it's just so easy to play. So, very nice. Let's go ahead and go check it out in the sound sample.
A nice little jam. All right, here we go. Here's some shimming.